Our next speaker represents the staff of California Maritime Academy. James Dalski serves as our Assistant Dean of Students and Director of uh, Career Development. James. Good afternoon. On behalf of the staff members at the California Maritime Academy, I thank you all for attending, attending and we welcome you. The California Maritime Academy has a long heritage of staff members who have literally helped pave the way for our future. Staff members are often those behind the scenes who plan, implement, and successfully accomplish many of the projects and programs that we offer today. They humbly take out the trash, bake the cookies, mow the lawns, repair the buildings, calculate fees, plan receptions, process records, initiate student activities, deal with discipline matters, recruit our future students, and they keep us safe, just to name a few. This army of workers continuously accomplishes tasks with limited personnel and limited budgets. When I talk to my colleagues at other universities, they constantly ask me, how do we do it? I tell them they would have to come here to understand. The vast majority of employees here at the California Maritime Academy know this is much more than a job. To some, this may be an opportunity. To others, it is a calling. And yet to others, it is much, much more. In 1997, Apple ran an advertisement called The Crazy Ones. For those of you who have not heard it or have forgotten the words, it goes like this. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs and the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them, but the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. To many staff here at the California Maritime Academy, this is much more than a job. And the California Maritime Academy is much more than a place of employment. It is our home. This is why tears are shed when someone retires. And this is why this campus and these students are our family. Some may see us as crazy. We just see how good we are and yet how great we could become. This is why we work. This is why we develop leaders for tomorrow and why we continue when others might simply decide it's time to call it a day. It is through this journey that we look to the past for inspiration. We strive to live up to the reputation that others have built. We look to the humble beginnings in 1929 when a few strangers came together to take boys out to sea and transform them into men. Remember that this history is not only where we came from, but also who we are today. Today, we sometimes work relentless hours to ensure each cadet receives the education and training they deserve. Each and every staff member plays a pivotal role in our students' lives, by not only helping them with daily tasks, but also serving as role members. We also believe in the future. We believe so intensely that this is the reason many of us are dedicating our lives to this place, to this home. It is why many of us spend more time here than with our own families. Richard Bach wrote, the bond that links your true family is not of blood, but of respect and joy in each other's life. Mutual respect, two simple words, but around here, they mean so much more. The staff of the California Maritime Academy are ready to see Thomas Cropper inaugurated today as the 14th president of the California Maritime Academy. President Cropper in his first year has helped revitalize this campus. Many returning to campus for the first time since graduation have told me there's a difference in the air. It is not something that can be pointed to, but a feeling of hope, a sigh of relief from constant worrying about budgetary woes and renewal in the faith and the promise of dreams. President Cropper has helped us trim the bushes of the past, is helping deliver on the promises we've made to our cadets today, and is helping us develop a vision for the future. President Cropper, we are eager to work alongside you to build a maritime academy unlike any other. An academy that honors our past, leads today, and believes in the vision of what the future will hold. I hope everyone will join me and the staff of the California Maritime Academy by welcoming President Cropper and Mrs. Cropper to our home and into our family. Finally, we would also like to invite each and every one of you to join us on this exciting adventure. 
Thank you. Our next speaker, again representing the Cal Maritime staff, is our community service specialist, Charles Constantine. Chuck? <clears throat> Chancellor White, Admiral Cropper, Mrs. Cropper. Honored guests, faculty and staff, and friends of the California Maritime Academy, welcome to this special occasion, the inauguration of the 14th president of the California Maritime Academy. My name is Chuck Constantine. I'm one of the community service officers here in the police department at Cal Maritime. I've been here since 1998, came here after 26 years in the United States Air Force. This is my first opportunity to work um, in the education field, and I'm thrilled. Several weeks ago, Admiral Cropper approached me as I was, going, as, as I was heading out on patrol one night, and he asked me what I was doing on the 11th of October, 2013. And I told him I'd probably be working on a special detail for his, for his inauguration. And the Admiral said, you can't work if you're going to be a guest speaker at my inauguration. Would you speak on behalf of the staff? You've been here quite a while, and you've seen a lot of things change. Would you talk about some of these things? And I thought for a moment, and I answered, absolutely, I will. Any opportunity to talk about this school to any of my peers, anybody throughout the CSU, I, I finally take that opportunity. The week Admiral Cropper arrived on campus, he walked up to me one afternoon, reached out his hand and introduced, me, introduced himself to me and said, hi, I'm Tom Cropper. Are you Chuck Constantine? My son mentioned you to, you to me. You know, he graduated from here only several weeks ago. He said I should meet you. I was won over immediately. Now I had to come up with something to talk about, something that, and usually I'm never at a loss of words, and then it hit me. As I walked the hallways late at night, rattling doorknobs and pulling windows and helping students out, sometimes writing parking tickets, some of the unfortunate things I have to do, writing parking tickets, um, I, look at the, I look at the pictures that are posted in, in the walls, in the hallways and on the walls of the university. And you look at them and you sit back and you say to yourself, these are a, a lot of pictures of people who have been here before and all the wonderful things that they have done but how can I relate to that? I relate to that by my own set of pictures that I have at home, pictures that I keep on my phone, and, things, time, and pictures I spend more time looking at. And they're the pictures of the people I truly admire. And these are the people, these are the men and women who comprise the represented staff of this fine school. The community of men and women who are skilled technicians, audiovisual technicians, cooks, custodians, administrators, admissions and records techs, accountants. Ship technicians, you know, we run, we, we're one of few schools in the, in the, United, in the United States that have a true, tra a true training ship, one that, that our students get their, you know, get hands-on experience on. We have to maintain that. We have logistics specialists and people who manage our simulators. And if you've ever been inside the simulator and over in the sim center, it's, it's, it's like magic. It's just amazing. And create, and create the one-time test bench items that professors would need to demonstrate the idea of, of what they're trying to explain to them to a group of budding engineers. These are the people who open the doors on Monday, clean the floors, prepare the meals, rattle the doorknobs and shake the windows, and create and maintain computerized systems that will allow our professors to, in, to instruct future mates, engineers, logistics specialists, and policymakers. Chancellor, while you ask anyone who's ever been at the California Maritime Academy for dinner, or, or, or a, any student who's ever been on board the training ship waiting to go on watch late, late at night, ask, or, or, or while on their first cruise or in our dining hall, what the best memory was, besides being on shore in some really exotic places, they're always gonna tell you, moms bake goods. <sighs> I don't care what anybody says, that's a pretty exciting experience for me. <laughs> You'll never... <laughs> You'll never hear this answer at another CSU because there's only two CSUs that have food services, and I think we're the best. While we, while we may be the smallest campus and have one of the smallest staffs, we have the pride of knowing that every ship or every boat navigating the water adjacent to our campus, San Francisco Bay, there's a true responsibility that our graduates, that one of our graduates is the captain or the mate or the engineer on that vessel. The same thing, and I have to say the same thing about it, the police officers we have here. We made a big change two years ago bringing police to the campus, and I think we've done a good job integrating them, and I think they've done a great job for us. 
Leadership is described as a process of, of social influence in which one person can enlist the aid of others in the accomplishment of a common task. That's one of the, that's one of the responsibilities of the president. And Admiral Cropper, I think you've done a, done a great job this last year and a half. The people are behind you, they're with you. The school can only be, can only be much more successful in the coming years. While our, photos, while our photos of graying leaders will continue to grow, Chancellor White, Admiral Cropper has a group of dedicated men and women that are committed to ensuring our students have the best staff support in the CSU. Admiral, thank you for this opportunity to speak at your inauguration. Representing our student body, our Corps of Cadets, is uh, First Class Cadet Molly McQuiston. Uh, Molly is a senior majoring in Marine Transportation. Molly? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get the speech ready. Um, anyway, it's an honor to be here. Good afternoon, everyone. So as I'm sure you all have seen, Cal Maritime is just a little bit different from most colleges and universities. As far as student leadership goes, we have RAs and associated students, but we also have um, the Corps of Cadets, and that's something that makes Cal Maritime very unique. Um, so all students are required to participate in the Corps, but some of us choose to be Corps officers. So last spring, before we were all sworn into our new positions, President Cropper gathered us for a talk. So he prefaced his address to us by saying that if anyone wasn't 100% dedicated to their new positions, then we should get up and leave now, no questions asked. Now, if I think of anyone else who would have prompted us with this, um, there probably would have been a handful of cadets who would have gotten up and left. Um, but when President Cropper asked us this, Nobody moved, and the room full of people was silent. So why did no one leave when we we're given permission to? Why did we all want to be core officers and take on hours of extra work, sometimes for a little tangible reward? Well, I think the answer to the, this question is this. President Cropper is the kind of leader we all wish to become. And because he shows dedication, determination, and compassion in his own work, we're all inspired to do the same in ours. He is the kind of individual who has people over at his home for backyard dinner parties, um, just to thank them for recognizing them for their work. He's the kind of person who commands respect and one who asks us to practice self-discipline. President Cropper is someone that the school can and does stand behind, and I mean that not just by core officers, associated students, or resident assistants, but every student and cadet. Thank you. <laughs> It is impossible to overstate the importance of private support in the world of higher education today. And the California Maritime Academy's uh, Foundation Board plays a vital role in raising uh, financial support for us. Representing Cal Maritime's Foundation Board is Mr. Tom Edwards. Tom? Uh, two years ago, I had the good fortune to come on the board of the California Maritime Academy Foundation. Our organization supports the university by providing scholarships and other programs. For years, I had driven across the Carquinas Bridge and looked down at the campus and the training ship Golden Bear. Little did I know what was down below. Since coming on the foundation board, I continually look at what makes the Cal Maritime uh, University successful. While I can list many areas, I want to share three with you. The cadets, the education they receive, and the institution itself. Why are each successful? First, motivated cadets. They all have a clear idea as to why they're at Cal Maritime. Each is clearly focused on a specific area of the maritime industry. 
I met a young man several weekends ago who transferred uh, here this year with about a year or so left to go from another California state institution. He was going backwards in terms of time it would take to graduate. But as he said, quote, I was about to get a degree in communications that would allow me to remain unemployed and move back home and live with my parents. <laughs> There's a motivated cadet. <laughs> Each student can clearly articulate their personal game plan. As a result, it's no coincidence that our last graduating class 94% of the graduates had a job 45 days after graduation. And in fact, when we did a job fair, more companies showed up for that than we had cadets. In addition, the requirements of uniforms and formations goes to the heart of what our, makes our cadet corps great. By requiring this, all cadets toe the line. This discipline is crucial when you consider, for example, being at sea. Attention to detail is paramount, as Mother Nature is most unforgiving. Now let's look at the factors that make a Cal Maritime education one of the best. First, small focused classes taught by incredibly talented professors in state-of-the-art facilities. The average class size is 14 to 1. Virtually all professors know the names of the cadets they teach. That doesn't exist at most universities. The professors at Cal Maritime are passionate about what they do and can take considerable pride in taking new incoming freshmen and turning them into trained leaders who may someday either captain a ship at sea or lead an organization on land. Further, the university has world-class technology that allows for practical hands-on learning. From our simulators, probably the best in all of the United States, to modern labs and lab equipment that allows cadets to take practical classroom learning and put it to use, to actually doing it in real life situations. And there's no better place than to put this learning to use than on the training ship Golden Bear, the best of all the training ships and the only one on the West Coast. The final area is the culture of Cal Maritime. It's the third factor that makes this school exceptional. First, the school listens to cadets. A group of cadets suggested that the whole of the Golden Bear be changed to a dark color to solve the problem of smudges on the hull from tugboat activity. The school listened and acted on the cadets' recommendation. Captain Bolton, I think your ship looks great. Next, there's an unwavering desire to expand the curriculum as well as the school. To be dormant and lack consistent change and innovation is potentially catastrophic. Five years ago, you could not go to any village in the world without seeing an Eastman Kodak sign. Look at them today. That is, if you can find them. And finally, the school is under new leadership. The president and his staff are all relatively new to Cal Maritime. No silos, no baggage. Everything is open to examination and to change. What a wonderful position to be in. Now, all of these factors tell a very compelling story for the foundation as we move forward attracting and cultivating new donors. All of this leads us to today's theme, the inauguration of President Thomas A. Cropper, Honor, believe, lead. This is the right man to lead our university as we honor our past, believe in our mission, and our future. On a personal note, many years ago, I served as a commissioned officer in the United States Coast Guard Reserve. As a junior officer, I attempted wherever possible to avoid admirals. Walk on the other side of the street, and whatever you do, what Whatever you do, don't make eye contact. <laughs> when I learned that we were getting an admiral as our next president, uh, I had some mixed feelings. I'm extremely pleased to say that Admiral Cropper has shattered all of those misconceptions that I had. He did all of that at our first meeting. To the students and faculty and alumni of Cal Maritime, 
you are profoundly fortunate to have President Cropper of the leader of this great institution. I am sincerely lucky to have Tom Cropper as my friend. Next, representing the alumni, we have the president of the California Maritime Academy Alumni Association, Ken Passe, class of 1969. Ken? Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to my alma mater and that of many of the people in this room. Uh, my name is Ken Passe. I'm a 1969 engineering graduate of Cal Maritime. It's a program that today has evolved into what we call marine engineering technology. Um, in addition, I'm also the uh, 25th president of the uh, Cal Maritime Alumni Association. It's an honor for me to be a part of uh, today's historic ceremony and celebration. Uh, I had the good fortune to be um, a member of the selection committee for the, for the new president. I'll tell you, it wasn't an easy, easy task, uh, and there are several uh, people in this room that were part of that same committee. Um, and they were all committed to finding the very best president uh, for the academy. Um, it's a struggle to narrow a list of very good applicants.